Ayan na. Start na to. Hello everyone. I'm Shira S. Ortigoza. Hi, I'm Crystal M. Lazaro. Good day. I'm Lucinal M. Dinagit. And I am Carlo W. Beruda. We're the first reporter in civil engineering orientation. And here is our report. History of civil engineering. Civil engineering deals with the construction of bridges, roads, buildings, dams, railways, and many more. It is also the oldest and broadest area of engineering. In history of civil engineering, ancient period at around 4,000 and 2,000 BC have discovered civil engineering in Egypt and Mesopotamia. Another information, Mesopotamia was the first civilized country in, during that time. All the first inventions, discoveries, and creation was generated in that place. With this, it opens the ideas and knowledge in civil engineering. Humans began to move away from a nomadic lifestyle and build permanent structures. When we say nomadic lifestyle, it deals with the people who following their source of living. A good example for that are these tribes and hunters who are just depending on the animals during the past. This led to the development of construction as a result of their trial and error. It distinguished good designs and product from less effective approaches. And that, as I've mentioned, nomadic people are just trying to depend on their source of living. But then, they tried to build a permanent structure and durable houses as their shelter. In ancient times, the term civil engineering was not commonly used until 18th century. One main reason kung bakit hindi ginagamit ang term na civil engineer because the queens as well as kings before require or acquire military engineer because they believe that, mili that militaries are stronger and expert in exerting forces in building a sturdy structures. Later on, the civil and military engineers were grouped as one because the techniques of designing in military construction projects were similar to the civil construction projects. National History of Civil Engineering per 1747 The National School of Bridges and Highways in France First Engineering School So, um, in this year, this is the first engineering school or first institution for the teaching of civil engineering and it was established in France and founded by Charles or rather founded by Daniel Charles Trudain. Next in 1771, Smithsonian Society of Civil Engineers. Um, John Smithon and some of his colleagues formed this society. Um, this society is a group is a group leaders of the profession who met informally over the dinner. So yes, they they met over dinner. Next one is 18th hundreds or 18th century. The term civil engineering was coined to incorporate all things civilian as opposed to military engineering. So meaning to say civil engineering was coined based to civilianization. Civilianization meaning is to ano, converting military to civilian. So kumbaga disab disapprove naman to doon sa military engineering. And also this term was first used to distinguish the newly um, recognized profession from military engineering. So Gaya nga nang sabi ko kanina, um, yung, ginamit nila to as opposed to military engineering. Ginamit nila to as disapprove dun sa military engineering. Next naman is, next slide po. Next slide. Yeah. Yung 1818, 1820 and 1828 is magkakasunod lang siya. So, yun muna yung i-discuss ko and then later on i-discuss ko na yung 1819. So, dun na tayo sa 1818. 1818, Institution of Civil Engineering. 
civil engineers. Um, this institution was founded in London and it is the world's first engineering society. So, how they founded this this institution? So, it, it is just because of a small group of young engineers who met um, in a London coffee shop and then they founded this institution or ICE. And then these young engineers had hoped that lots of engineers from different engineering um, backgrounds would join the institution. However, um, civil engineering hadn't really become an official profession yet. And before the 18th century, um, most engineers were in armed force. So, kagaya nga ng sabi ni Miss Ortigosa, um, dati puro ano lang siya, military engineer. Wala pang civil engineering. Yan. So, after two years of struggling to attract new members, so, di ba small group lang sila, kaya medyo nahihirapan silang mag uh, manghikayat ng mga members. Um, they asked um, Thomas Telford to become its first president and that was in 1820. Um, his appointment in this year is not only gave ICE a major boost, um, it also play a huge part in um, shaping who are we today or who we are today. Um, he designed and built all types of infrastructure from churches to castles, from tunnels to bridges, and from canals to harbors. He was also given the nickname the Colossus of Roads because his design were used to construct all major British um, highways and take note of this during his lifetime he built over 1000 miles of roads so kaya din siya tina kaya din siya binansagan na colossus of roads kasi ininvest niya yung buhay niya doon sa paggawa ng roads na yon and later on using his political and social connections Telford helped to bring in new members from UK and overseas. So during this during this time um naging sikat na si Telford. So so nak mas nakatulong yon para makapag um makapanghikayat ng members at makapag at makapang-attract ng members. Kaya malaking tulong din si Telford kung bakit dumami yung members ng ICE. But his most important role was getting ICE's Royal Charter, and that was year 1828. The institution received a Royal Charter, a Royal Charter. Um, it gives the status as um, the leading institution for the civil engineering profession. So formally, dito na na-recognize yung civil engineering as a profession. So... Balik na tayo sa 1819, um, Norwich University. Um, this university is the first private college to teach civil engineering in the United States. And it was founded by Captain Alden Partridge. Again, it was founded, it was founded by Captain Alden Partridge. It is also the first degree in civil engineering in the U.S. was awarded um, by Rensselaer Polit Polytechnic Institute in 1835. So basically, noong 1818, I, I mean noong 1819, yung Norwich University is nakilala siya as first private college na nagturo ng civil engineering. While noong 1835 naman, um, doon na sila inawardan ng first degree in civil engineering in the U.S. And lastly, in, in the year 1905, Nora Stanton Blatch. Nora Stanton Blatch studied at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, um, wherein she became the first woman in the U.S. to obtain a degree in civil engineering. At the same time, 
she became the first woman to be admitted as a member of American Society of Civil Engineers or ASCE. Um, so parang so parang dito parang naging dalawa yung award niya. Yung first woman, yung una first woman na naka-obtain ng na nagkaroon siya ng degree sa civil engineering and second one is yung naging first wo- first woman member siya ng ASCE and as much um as far as I know um siya ang ang parang kumbaga yung status ng member niya dito ng membership niya dito is junior kasi bago pa lang siya so yun lang for the educational and institu- institutional history of civil engineering Next po, Ms. Dinagrit. Hello? Si Ms. Dinagrit po. Okay po. Wait lang. Yung cam nyo po. Okay na po. Opo. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is about some of the most influential civil engineering throughout history. One of those is John Smitten. John Smitten is one John Smitten is from UK and at a very young age Smitten already showed his interest for engineering. So when he's 18, his father sent him to London to get a legal education, but he returned back home in the summer of 1744 and went to Yorkshire to develop his skills to become a scientific instrument maker. He has a lot of scientific experiments and 18 of his papers were published by the Royal Society, which is the world's oldest independent scientific academy. Those topics included in his scientific experiments were about vacuum pump, thermal expansion of metals, and practical measure of horsepower. And because of that, the president of the Royal Society recommended him to design the Eddystone Lighthouse. He just started out his CE career when he did the project, but it became a successful that led him to be one of the busiest, busiest I mean, consulting civil engineering during that time. John Smeaton also founded the first engineering society in the world which is the Society of Civil Engineers in 1771. But then later on, it was changed to as Smithsonian Society of Civil Engineers after his death. Eddystone Lighthouse is located in English Channel, 14 miles south of Plymouth, England. It was a dangerous place as it was the source of many shipwrecks. So Lighthouse, a structure required to warm ships, warm ships, away from the Eddystone rocks. Lighthouse has been recreated for about fourth or fifth times, and the, la- the first three were made out of wood and suffered the fate of sea storm. The fourth lighthouse was built by Smeaton in 1759, made of Cornish granite, but in the 1870s, the foundation eroded and became unsafe. So the lighthouse the lighthouse that existed today was constructed by Sir James Douglas in 1882, but using the successful concepts of Smitten's design. Next, next is Benjamin Wright. Benjamin Wright is the father of American civil engineer, chief engineer during the construction of Erie Canal, Delaware, and Hudson Canal. He was an American who was born in Witherfield, Connecticut, USA and also the chief engineer of the Erie Canal and the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. He received so much training while living with his uncle where he learned law and basic surveying. So he was trained as a surveyor in his youth since then. 
1789, he moved to Rome, New York, as there's a high demand for surveyors. And in addition for this is he has a reputation for accuracy and honesty that that's, that is why he was in a great demand as a surveyor. In the mid 1790s, the state of New York hired English civil engineer William Weston to make surveys and design canals. Weston hired Wright to help him with surveying and in a few years, they became success, successful of completing it. In 1813, having raised the necessary funds to build the Erie Canal, the state of New York reached out to Weston again to head the project, but he declined and fell the job to Benjamin. Wright served as the chief engineer on the project between 1817 and 1825, and it became successful that brought more projects to him. Wright went on a number of important engineering projects like Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, Delaware and Hanson Canal, St. Lawrence Ship Canal, and many more. In 1842, he passed away in New York City due to stroke. But in 1969, the American Society of Civil Engineering declared him as the father of American civil engineering. He earned that title by being chief engineer of U.S. first grand engineering project, the Erie Canal. The next one, will be reported by Mr. Ruda. Okay. Um, the next most influential influential engineer is Isambard Kingdom Brunel. So he was born on April 9, 1806, and he died on September 15, 1859. Um, mas kilala siya dahil um, nagpo-focus ang kanyang mga works sa paggawa ng tunnels, bridges, and railways, mostly using um, irons and steam para rin sa um, mga ships niya. He became also the chief engineer for the greatest western ra railway. Um, ito po yung naglilink sa Bristol and London. At nag-design din po siya ng tatlong, steam, uh, tatlong ships. Isa doon ay ang SS Great Western um, which is considered as the biggest steamship of the time. And next na ship niya na ginawa niya ay ang SS Great Britain. So ito namang pong SS Great Britain na ginawa niya, um, more modern na po siya kasi um, made of iron na po siya and engine powered na po compared po sa nauna niyang ship which is steam powered. And lastly, yung pinakalas na ship na ginawa niya ay ang SS Great Eastern. So itong SS Great Eastern, um, more, of, uh, more on luxurious side po ito. Um, kaso hindi na po ito natuloy dahil po sa daw sa impractical use nito and also he also designed the Clifton sus suspension bridge which has 16 meters in height and 200 meters in length so itong mga achievements niya po ito um, ito po yung nagdala sa kanya kung sa pagiging second greatest Briton of all time so ang isa sa mga ginawa niya ay ang box tunnel box tunnel. So, ang box tunnel, ang operation po nito, um, start ng operation po nito ay noong 1836. So, noong time na po iyon, um, wala pa pong masyadong um, machinery na pang drill po sa tunnel na iyon. Bakos, um, gumamit po sila ng explosives at sa katunayan nga ay gumaga gumagasto sila ng one ton of explosives per week. And about two, at nag-excavate din sila na 200,000 cubic meters of soil. And since uh, ay, ano pala, since madilim pala dyan sa box tunnel na yan nung, nung araw, um, gumagamit na lang sila ng kandila. Yun lang po kasi yung available na object na pang illuminate po. Para naman sa design, sa western side, yung picture na nakikita nyo ngayon is mas engrande siya tingnan compared sa eastern side nito dahil yung eastern side po nito ay ginamitan lang po ng simple stoneworks. And um, sa pag-construct din pala nito, hindi lang siya um, one directional yung paggawa ng tunnel. Bagkos ay nagsimula po sila sa both sides po ng tunnel, east and west. And nung nag po sila sa pinakagitna ng tunnel, um, according po sa calculations ni Sir Isambard, 
nagkaroon lang po ng 5 centimeters na error sa misplacement po yon sa both sides po ng tunnel. Pero okay lang daw naman po yun kay Sir Isambard. Medyo um, ma- malit lang naman daw po yun na difference. Kaya functional pa rin yung box tunnel niya. At nung natapos na po yung pag-construct ng box tunnel, um, nung June 30, 1841, walang naganap na opening ceremony. So, ang next naman po natin na influential engineer ay si Gustav Eiffel. Oh, yun. Si Gustav Eiffel, he's, he is a renowned French civil engineer and architect. Remembered as the, ma- the magician of iron and his masterpiece is the Eiffel Tower. So si Gustav Eiffel naman ay ipinanganak noong December 15, 1832 and namatay siya noong December 28, 1923. Um, katulad din po ni Sir Isambard, um, nag-specialize din po siya sa pag-construct ng ironworks la tulad po ng iron bridges, railways din po. And ang mga achievements po ay ito. Um, siya po yung nag-design ng Garabit Viaduct. Um, siya din nag-design ng movable dome sa Nice, France. And siya rin yung nag-construct po ng framework para sa Statue of Liberty. Kasi po yung original na engineer po para sa pagtayo ng Statue of Liberty ay namatay. Kaya sa kanya po inilipat yung um, work na yon. And para, nung nag-retire po siya, um, mostly ng kanyang remaining lifetime po ay itinuon niya na lang sa research po ng aerodynamics and meteorology. So, ang isa sa kanyang pinaka-famous na work ay ang Eiffel Tower. Ayan. So, ang Eiffel Tower ay sinimulang gawin noong 1887 at natapos ng 1889. Diyan niya nakuha yung um, nickname, ay yung title niya na The Magician of Iron kasi in two years, natapos niyang gawin yung Eiffel Tower which is at that time napakabilis na. Um, yun nga no. The tower is composed of 12,000 different components and 2.5 million rivets. All designed and assembled to handle wind pressure. So, sa start po ng, nag-start po sila ng pagmamount ng mga pillars noong July 1, 1887. Para naman sa unang palapag ng Eiffel Tower, natapos siya noong April 1, 1888. Para naman sa pangalawa na flo- second floor, um, natapos ito noong August 14, 1888 then same year. And yung top, yung top part po ng Eiffel Tower ay natapos noong March 31, 1889. Um, sinasabi rin po noong time na yon, marami pong kritiko ang nag-disagree sa istura ng Eiffel Tower kasi para daw po sa kanila, parang hindi raw po mas- tapos yung istura ng Eiffel Tower. Kahit kung titingnan niya po, para daw po sa kanila, parang pinagdikit-dikit lang daw po na hagdan. Pero nung kinalaunan, yung mga kritiko na po ito ay tinangkilik na rin po yung Eiffel Tower. So, yun lang po. And maraming samalamat po sa pakikinig sa aming report. So, now I will discuss the prehistoric techniques or the prehistoric construction techniques. Stone masonry, um, it is the creation of buildings, structures, and sculptures using stone as the primary material. So basically, itong stone masonry ay yung pinaka ginagamit nilang material is yung stone. Um, there are nine featured masonry techniques but I will just discuss the five of them. First one is the folded corner. So the name says that the stone around corners are folded. It is suggested that this was incorporated as an earthquake preventative. Um, the examples of this is, you can see on the PowerPoint percentage. The next one is the multifaceted stones or multifaceted stones. This design, this design feature was incorporated in super, into constructions as an earthquake preventative. So, um, Itong construction na ito, or itong stones na ito, is um, naging um, earthquake preventative na din siya. 
ang uh, nagtagal tong stones na to dahil sa good conditions na, quali na quality na meron siya. Uh, the example of this is the Valley Temple from Giza, Egypt. Uh, the next one is the, the metal block place. Uh, this metal block place is another construction feature commonly suggested as an earthquake preventative. So, the first three featured Masonic techniques is the construction as an uh, earthquake preventative. So, it is the means used to join huge blocks together and they also believe that copper or silver was used at Tiawanaku and which are both soft metal. So, yung dynamic sa Tiawanaku is copper. And the example of this is Angkor Wat from the old world from Egypt or from Cambodia. The next one is the quarry marks. Um, the definition of this is the megalithic builders employed the same method of splitting quartz at different locations all around the world. So, this quarry marks is for splitting stones. The example of this is the Machu Picchu and the Cusco from South America. Um, by far, the easiest way for splitting quartz stones is to chip the stones or chip the series of holes into the stone which are then packed when wedges which are then packed with wedges and shims. Um, this, um, the wedges and shims are made of wood following the addition of water and then the wedges expanded and the stone splits along so the last one is the Maltese concrete or Torba. Um, this concrete is from Gantija Malta or Gantija Malta. It is the oldest freestanding temples in the world. And this idea was not accept, accepted for a long time. Hindi siya inaccept muna. Pero yung mga Maltese archaeologists are now of the opinion the Torba or Malta now was formed by compacting crumpled rocks and rock dust then adding water creating a top and durable rock like material on par with the best and strongest concrete used today so yung yung Maltese concrete is the best and strongest concrete na ginagamit ngayon. So, that's all from the prehistoric construction techniques. And the next reporter is The next thing that we're going to talk about is about two of the famous ancient civil engineering structures that were still visible until today. So, the first one is the Great Wall of China that can be found to the northwest and north of Beijing, China and was the longest fortified line ever built. Its construction began in the 7th century that stands about 25 feet high. Its sides are made of wood, earth, brick, and stone, while the top is paved with bricks set in lime. This wall is not a continuous structure one, but a series of walls and fortifications built over several, several hundreds of years. It is constructed primarily to serve as a defense against the nomadic invasions from the north. It was the first emperor of Qin Dynasty who ordered to build the wall, and much later on Ming Dynasty Revive it, creating stronger walls using more bricks and stone instead of plum earth. The Great Wall of China was built entirely by hand and took hundreds of years to complete. The second one is the Pyramid of Djoser, who was reopened on March 5, 2020, after 14 years of restoration. It was designed by an architect named Imhotep to house the coffin of Pharaoh Djoser. Pharaoh Djoser is the first pharaoh of Third Dynasty. Imhotep devised a new structure made of six layers of stone that got smaller as they ascended. The final product was meant to be a stairway to heaven. It was the first building ever made of stone and led the way to Egypt, building more famous pyramids just like the Great Pyramid of Giza. Hi, ako nga pala si Carlo Ibiruda 
At ngayon ay didiscuss ko sa inyo ang modern construction methods at ang iba't ibang uri nito. So first, ano nga ba ang modern construction methods? These are the methods that are developed in construction industry with proper and detailed planning so that it will reduce the overall construction time, it will also reduce the construction costs, and it will maintain the overall sustainability. So, ang unang uri ng modern construction methods na meron tayo ay ang paggamit ng concrete walls and floors. Concrete walls are mainly applied for seat walls, retaining walls, decorative exterior, and interior finishes. The concrete is also used as a flooring material, wherein it will provide smooth and attractive flooring. Ang kinaibahan lang ng concrete flooring sa iba't ibang uri ng flooring na meron tayo ngayon ay mas affordable ito, mas madaling ayusin, mas madaling linisin kung nasid ito na properly, and yun, mas affordable. Next naman na modern construction methods ay ang precast cladding panels. It is the installation of a material over another that finally act as a skin or layer. So ang ginagawa naman nito ni precast cladding panels ay nagsaserve siya as a control element para hindi maka-infiltrate kagad sa iyong structure ang mga weather elements tulad ng dust or water vapor. So ang next naman ay ang precast flat, flat panel system. It involves the procedure of making floor and wall units off-site. So ginag ang mga floors and wall units ay ginagawa pa lang sa factory para pag i-deliver na lang to on-site ay mas madali na lang tong i-erect. And um, mas affordable din to and mas marireduce din ito ang construction time mo. So next naman ay ang modular construction or mas kilala as 3D volumetric construction. Um, the same lang ito kanina sa precast flat panel system. Kaso nga lang, ang pinipremade dito ay ang tinatawag nating modules or um, structures na malalaki tulad ng rooms. Um, ganon din ang ginagawa. Um, ginagawa na rin to sa factory, then i-deliver on-site para i-erect. Tapos, ang mga modules pala dito or rooms ay meron na internal and external finishes and services installed. So, next naman ay ang twin wall technology. It is a hybrid solution of wall system that combines the qualities of erection speed and precast concrete with the structural, structural integrity of in-situ concrete. At ginagarantiya ng twin wall technology ang structural integrity and waterproof reliability for the structure. So, next naman ay ang flat slabs. Flat slabs are highly versatile elements widely used in construction providing minimum depth and fa faster construction. At nagpo-provide din ito ng column grids that are flexible. Next naman ay ang thin joint masonry. It, use, it utilizes 2 to 3 mm thick mortar joints using a quick setting adhesive mortar enabling faster and easier construction. It also enables faster weatherproofing of the building. Mortar mixing consists of nothing more than adding water to the premixed mortar powder. And it also provides excellent thermal and sound insulation. And for the application of the mortar, it uses special coop, scoops to apply the correct thickness of the mortar. And lastly, ang pin ay ang insulating concrete framework. It has twin walled panels that are either polystyrene panels or blocks as the formwork, then it will be filled with concrete. And the panels will provide in thermal, a good thermal insulation a good robustness and sound insulation. So, yun lang, ang, yun lang ang tungkol sa modern construction method. Modern structure. Burj Khalif. The building was named in honor of the ruler of Dubai and president of the United States Arab Emirates, Shaikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahayan. It, it is the tallest building in the world, standing at 829.8 meters. 
For you to picture it out, imagine niyo yung tatlong Eiffel Tower na pinagpatong-patong and matchi with matching two two toppings ng Empire State Building. Ganun po kataas yung Burj Khalifa. So all in all, if we compare the two given periods, the ancient and the modern, with regards to their construction techniques, ancient focus more on the quality of the structure's lifespan. Meaning to say, they were more dedicated on the sturdiness and stability of a structure. While in modern, it also focuses on stability of a structure. But on the other, but on the other hand, they were able to use advanced materials for the designing of a structure. Yun lang po yung report and thank you for listening.